What's up, everybody? You are tuned in to another edition of The Remix. I am your host, Kiara Cotton, here today with Darian Stitt, the founder and CEO of Artistic Rebels. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, so Darian is also a dancer for the Cleveland Cavaliers Scream Team. <laughs> so tell me how you got involved with dancing. Um, the cliche um, stereotype. I was watching Michael Jackson a lot growing up. Um, I started trying to mimic his moves and different stuff like that. And my mom and dad started seeing me. And it's like, you're pretty good at that. You know, I used to dance too, my dad told me. And I was like, really? So I started doing it more, started doing talent shows, different stuff like that. And then the rest is history. Can you remember your first performance, like outside of performing for your parents? Yeah, um, I was in fourth grade, uh, Warrensville, um, for uh, our talent show, and we had to merge with the high school. So I was pretty nervous, and my dad said, you want me to do it with you? And I was like, yeah. And then it was me and him, our first show, our first and only show, and we had did it, and it was it was amazing. Where did you guys perform to? Um, it was a Sierra track. I cannot remember the name of it, but I know it was Sierra. She was, you know, popping back. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, that's super cool. So from dancing from your parents, what was the next, in front of your parents, what was the next step after that for you in, ta in terms of taking your career um, seriously? Um, well, after that, they said that, they asked me that I want to start getting started in like classes and stuff. And then I told them, yeah, um, I only took one or two classes. And the lady that I met, her name was Jamie Taylor. At the time, she was the coordinator for the um, Cavaliers. So she started seeing how I was dancing and stuff and said I was pretty good for my age. At that time, I was probably like 9 or 10. And she said, you know what, I'm going to try something. Have you ever been to the Gundarina? That's that's how you Throwback. know it is. That's how you yeah. know the Gundarina. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, I don't even know what that is. And she said, okay, I'm going to talk to your mom about it, and you're going to come to a Cavs game. So I said, okay. And um, what I did was, at that time, that's when the screen team was actually being formed at the same time, too. So I was actually the first Cav kid to ever do anything. So I was out there at halftime dancing with them and everything else. That following year, that's when they made Cav Kids, and I was on that for three years. That's awesome, so it's all full circle. Yep. So do you get nervous, or are you past that? Always, no, I always get nervous. I don't, I feel like people always get nervous, no matter how much experience you have, I feel like you're, you're always gonna get nervous. Like, that's just a part of the experience, the, the industry, everything, like. And so what's your process leading up to a performance? Are you kind of like a meditation guy? Are you a music guy? Definitely um, music. Um, a little bit of meditation. I pray a lot too, mm -hmm. um, right before. Um, even if I like in the corner and I don't close my eyes, I definitely just say like a quick silent prayer or it might be like vocal for if I'm like with a group or my team or anything like that, um, just to kind of feel that relief. And I def it definitely, um, I feel it afterwards and everything else, but definitely um, either I pray or music, vibe out, kind of like just get in my own little zone and then the rest is history, just go from there. And dancing is pretty rigorous. So like, how do you stay in shape or is it just the act of dancing that keeps you in shape or do you do other things to help you prepare? <laughs> so um, while I was dancing in high school, I was doing uh, football, middle school and high school I was doing football. So that got me in shape a lot. Um, I was dancing at the same time too, but kind of took a little hiatus from it when I was doing football. Um, so I do a lot of training like at home. I don't like really going to the gym too much, um, which I'm starting to do now, which is kind of ironic. Like not on with the screen team, trying to get back into the gym more so than at home. Cause when I'm home, I'm sleep. Like, gotcha. cause I'm so tired. <laughs> Rest. So yeah, so definitely. Mm -hmm. So um, having started dancing so young, has dancing taken a toll on your body? Um, or do you still feel like I'm a young whippersnapper and I got it? Definitely feel that. Like <laughs> here and there I feel little stuff, um, like my knees and stuff like that, but definitely football did more restrain than anything. Okay. Um, that's actually why I stopped playing football. Um, I had two, a fractured wrist and a sprain wrist, wow. then I dislocated one of my fingers. I was like, you know what, God, I think you try to tell me something. <laughs> Um, if I want to keep dancing, I should stop doing this. So that's when I decided to like really start pursuing dance as my profession, period. Because if I wasn't dancing, I'd be doing football. Like that's how much I love football too. So cool, cool. So what has been your favorite performance to date? You've been you performed everywhere. So from tell me a little about the people that you have performed for. Um, I performed for local artists. Um, people like Suicide. Um. Drew Castleberry when he was here in town, because I know he moved to um, Nashville. Uh, that's somebody I was working with personally, like all the time, choreographing stuff for him or like ver vice versa, him helping me with different stuff. Um, Drew Castleberry, Drew Aside. Who else? Um, mainstream wise, it, 
MGK. Tiana Taylor was the first mainstream person I worked with. She's extremely down to earth. She was cool. Um, she actually had auditions some years back and one of my guys, his name is Zay, he's not with us no more. Um, he was the head of our marketing at the time. So him and my team was like broadcasting, like, you know, tag artistic rebels in our auditions. So by the time we got there, she actually knew us by face, everything. Awesome. And she was like, oh, you guys are artistic rebels. So she has a real good relationship with us. And we actually got a chance to open up for her at her concert at the Agora. Nice. So, the most yeah. recent one? Um, no, oh, okay, years gotcha, back, years okay, back, gotcha, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, that's super cool. And then, so let's talk about the Artistic Rebels. How did you come up with that? Um, so it was actually the after the second year when I tried out for Screen Team, I actually didn't make it. The first year I did, but I ended up quitting just because I was going into college and I didn't want to, that to really collide with my schedule. So the second year I tried out, um, I actually didn't make it. So instead of like me just kind of, you know, being bitter about it or anything else, I said like, you know what? Let me just do my own thing for now, and then I'm gonna come back to it. So I actually started to make artistic rebels because um, coming up as a solo dancer and everything else had a lot of people that wanted me to make a crew. And I was like, nah, I'm kind of past that. I was in crews already, didn't really like it. But I knew that um, I was blessed more than a lot of people coming up, um, the people that I met, and just seeing them have not what I had coming up, like um, being exposed to the Cavs at such a young age and stuff mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So that kind of inspired me to give back to the community. So that was kind of my way of doing that, creating Artistic Rebels, because um, it's not just dance with us. We do dance, media coverage, um, marketing for different companies, and then we also do hosting. Wow. So a lot of people we met, they did dancing. They were like videographers, different stuff like that. So it was different ways I would create events or do events and I would tell people like, you know, come here, we can collab on this, collab on that. It's just bu basically building like a network. Mm -hmm. So that's basically why I created Artistic Rebels. Um, so it is found, like based here in Cleveland, correct? Um, Actually, well, the home base is, yeah. Okay. So we have people in New York, actually, um, his name is Fame. We have somebody that's in Atlanta from Columbus though. She moved to um, Atlanta just a couple months back. Her name is Amber. Um, we have somebody in North Carolina, his name is Martel. Uh, so we're pretty much everywhere, um, trying to become worldwide, just spreading the um, message of us. Basically, um, a rebel means to be a leader in your art form. So basically, like wherever you are, you're here to inspire the people that are quote unquote followers to like lead so they can be themselves, mm -hmm. whatever their talent is and everything else. So what has been your greatest obstacle in that role as the founder of the Artistic Rebels? Whew, so many. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say my biggest one is just, uh, making time for myself. I'm a very selfless person. Um, so over the course of the years, a lot of people told me that it's taken a toll on me, like in my personal life and my professional life too. Um, just I've been more so for everybody else except for myself. So coming back to the screen team, like that was the first step I've made for myself in a very long time. And people could see like I'm genuinely happy getting back to my old self before I made Artistic Rebels. Not to shun any of them like that, it's just, when you do take on the responsibility of being an entrepreneur that's, that's, that's what comes with it yeah absolutely um so what's next for you what are you um, hoping to achieve the season just started not just started but in the, the last month or so um and then you also are still currently doing artistic rebels so how are you finding that balance um well i'm delegating a lot of stuff to different people on my team they've stepped up um over the course of the years it was a struggle with them because of their schedules but now i f see that they're maturing and stuff so they're able to handle it more so delegating different stuff to people like my friend carlo merck uh, damon they're stepping up when it comes to the shows like when we get bookings and different stuff like that um my assistant her name is sean uh she helps me out a lot like just staying organized i live by a calendar now never yeah. used to do that <laughs> Um, so, Calendars are important. I think they're uh, so yeah. underrated as a tool for uh, young professionals and entrepreneurs. So. Definitely. So, yeah, definitely them delegating stuff to them uh, has helped me out a lot, um, especially with the Cavs. Like, I stay busy probably every single day. If it's not a game, it's an appearance, vice versa. Um, if I'm not with the Cavs, I'm basically doing stuff for AR and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's been a journey. So, what do you hope to, your ultimate dream, like, goal at the end of all of this, what, what do you hope to achieve? Um, for Artistic Rebels to be, if not the number one, one of the top entertainment companies in the world, like to, like worldwide, if you need anything, no matter where you're at, there's always a branch there to help. And as far as like the members in AR, um, a lot of them, um, just to help change their lives and inspire them, help their dreams come true and different stuff like that. A lot of them didn't really have the best support system coming up. So 
for them, the team is their everything and their family and different stuff like that. So them knowing like anywhere they go, they have like family wherever they at, that, that means a lot to me. And then some of them have expressed that throughout being in the company. Um, Fame, who's from New York, the two times he came here, he said, I want to move to Cleveland. I'm saying, I'll, you, you sure about that? Uh, that's kind of the opposite. Like we should come right. to New York. He's like, nah, bro, like y'all definitely are like a true family because we help find them somewhere to stay, be at a hotel, when our houses, different stuff like that. And we just build like the camaraderie with each other, so. So how do people get involved? Like, is Artistic Rebels open to everybody or is there like requirements? Um, Over the years, I kind of learned to to be strict on the requirements. At first, I was kind of like real open with it. Like, oh yeah, you can come, you know, I know you or, you know, your talent speaks for itself. But being in the industry, you know, I noticed the different people that's like opportunists or like uh, yeah. just, you know, say one thing and then their actions so something else. So um, I would say the requirements are just, you know, um, Usually people reach out to us from social media, so I'll interview them on there just to kind of get a sense of where their head is at mm -hmm. before I really invite them out to like the team to meet us in person. Yeah. Um, after that, you know, we meet in person, we get to know you more, and then we just kind of take you on team outings to see like how everything goes. Um, then go from there. Um, I emailed them like a members package just so they could see like what's the thing to um, expect coming into us and understand what you're getting yourself into right to inspire you even more and see how we can help you and then even how you can help us. So um, so if people do want to get involved, where can they find all that information? Uh, we're on Instagram at Artistic Rebels all together. Um, Twitter, Artistic underscore Rebels. And then Facebook, um, Artistic Rebels Entertainment. We're working on our website that should be launching, if not in December, the latest January. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Awesome, I think that's all I have for you. Do you want to say anything? Any last words to the people watching? Mm -hmm. Anything like that? Thank you for having me. <laughs> of um, course. This is an amazing course. outlet. Um, I feel like if you are anybody, definitely hit up Kiera. Yeah. You guys have just watched another episode of The Remix. I'm your host, Kiera Cotton, and he's Darian Stitt. See you next time.